Welcome to the Calyrex Game Corner's Pokemon D&D campaign, featuring Cindy, a young vagabond from the Hoenn region with pyromaniac tendencies, Gimli, a stocky, burly miner from Sinnoh looking for his lost son, Elodie, an enthusiastic foodie and baker from Kalos, and Schmidt, an enigmatic man from Johto with a duck. My name is Rich, and I'm the Game Master, and this is Dunsparce and Drampa. It is now morning in the Doofer Town Pokemon Center Hostel. Right off the bat, I need everyone to roll some dice. I need a DC-8 con save from Schmidt and Cindy. I need a D-100 from Elodie, and I need a D-20 from Gimli. Roll baby. 13. A 1. A 1. I didn't roll a 1. I rolled a 2. Okay, that, that may, that's a distinction. That's good to know. My roll is 5. 93. Okay, fantastic. Here is what these rolls were for. You can probably guess some of them. Uh, Cindy and Schmidt are hungover. They're not doing great. Um, their okay. movement speed is reduced. They're feeling dehydrated. They're going to do poorer at some checks. And in general, they're just having a bad time. Cindy is much more hungover than Schmidt is. I have my one drink. <laughs> Your one drink, yeah. You did not take it well. Uh, you had a long, sweaty gym battle, uh, and you're out on this beach town, and you didn't have any water, so you are feeling bad. Or also no food either, right? Yeah. Did we eat? I don't, I don't think you did. <laughs> yeah, you're not doing great. Gimli's d20 roll is a secret surprise. He doesn't know, but I had him roll it. Um, it's a 13, so. Yeah, it's great. Just, yeah. It, it's something. Um, Lucky number 13. Elodie's D100 had to be a minimum. The check was 20. Uh, she rolled a 93. <gasps> Eggy? Eggy? As time. the party stirs awake in their small little hostel room, the egg incubator that Elodie has been carrying around begins to crack and shatter and glow a light and out emerges. Well, not fully emerges, actually. This Pokemon fails to fully leave its shell. Instead, it just pops its head, its feet, and its hands out, and it looks around and goes, Pree! and it looks at all of the people that are around itself. Mm -hmm. I I need to do some rolls, or you guys need to do some rolls more specifically. Schmidt, Elodie, and Quacko, each of you roll a d20. Three oh, just... again for Schmidt and ten for Quacko. Okay. Four for Elodie. Okay, perfect. As Togepi emerges from the egg... They open their eyes, and the first creature they gaze upon is their father, Quacko, the far-fetched. Um, please have Quacko roll for this Togepi's nature. It doesn't really matter because it's a table, but, you know. Uh, that is a natural one. Okay. For the table, that's not necessarily so bad, but let me see what exactly that is. Apathetic. Good way, good way to spend a one. Yeah, that's a great way to spend a one. This Togepi is just completely enamored with Quacko. Um, this newborn baby sees this magnificent Farfetch and just can't stop squealing, waving its little hands. It's like it wants to be picked up by Quacko. Um, is there any sort of action as far as that goes for Quacko? Uh, yeah, Quacko will pick a bump. Okay. Um, do you, please also have Quacko... Well, well, no, we'll let Elodie roll this. Roll... What's Togepi's gender ratio? I think it favors male. Good question. Uh, yeah, holy shit. Yeah, roll a d10, and 10 is female, okay. and the rest are male. Four, so female, right? Uh, <laughs> or... No. Uh, it, opposite. Opposite, yeah. yeah. Other way. 90% of Togepi's are male. Um, I rolled a 10, by the way, just to throw that out there. Do you, do you want to take that, then? Do you want to, I mean, uh, you guys can decide. You guys can choose sure. the gender can... of the baby. I was going to say, it was Elodie's <laughs> roll. Choose wait actually choose the gender of the baby <laughs> actually what you guys should do which is better i think is choose the name and have that inform the gender actually sure. I, th I think that's best so what are you guys gonna name this okay. little, little babe little baby hmm. uh, I, I do think gregory was funny but i feel like the moments passed because he wasn't born in jail omelet omelet i do love food names it's a little egg it's a little it's egg, egg. Just but then omelets also gender neutral, so haha, ha. didn't actually help. 
just laughing at omelet. Omelet is gender neutral. New quote. This is our non-binary <laughs> child omelet. I mean, yeah, you could. <laughs> we honestly, yeah. gender and Pokemon, we can just, they can be non-binary if you want. <laughs> like, that's absolutely fine. As this stands, this Togepi is going to be most imprinted on in taking commands from Quacko. So I'm going to send the sheet to voice text. And I guess you guys can kind of dual parent, but at the end of the day, Quacko should probably be giving the command. Um, Quack, there. Should be an fair, interesting fair, fair. dynamic, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Also, because Quacko won that role, um, you might notice that Omelette has a unique passive, which I will now read to the class. Um, Omelette has gained Quacko's fatherly guidance. This Pokemon will critically strike and critically save on natural 19s before other modifications. And in addition, they also have Serene Grace, which is great. So, congratulations. Additionally, because Kara, who gave you this egg, is a competitive trainer, uh, this egg hatched at level 5, not at level 1. Oh, so. wow. Anyone will have an extra... Uh, big baby. Big, big baby. Big no, charm and I'm metronome. Not, yeah, I'm not using my gourd. I can give it my gourd um, if we want to do that. My gourd? Oh my gourd. <laughs> <Gord. Gord. laughs> Under feats and other notes, all it says is, is baby. Yeah, that's true. He, sh he sure is, though. He yeah. sure is. Definitely baby. Yeah, this is great. We have a, a new Pokemon trainer in the party. Very good. It is proficient <laughs> in Arcana. Yeah, Arcana and Persuasion are its proficiencies. It's negative dex. This is not my child. <laughs> it's Paco's child. Disowned. Yeah, this is, this is Paco's child. Paco's to teach him how to fly. Yeah, come on. Uh, eventually you will. Yeah. We will just say if someone can carry Omelet. Uh, Omelet can waddle around. They are capable of movement. Um, but again, I will reiterate, they obey Quacko currently at this point. Very good. Schmidt and Cindy, not feeling great. It's a little later in the morning than you guys usually wake up. It's closer to 10 a.m. than it is like 8 a.m. Uh, and it sounds like there's somewhat of a hurried and worried commotion in the Pokemon Center. Nothing alarming, but there's lots of voices and like an occasional kind of shout. Um, it seems like there's a lot of people in here. What's going on? Probably got to roll to find out, huh? You could roll to or just gather some information. Or... Yeah, you're hang here. on, hang on. Here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make two rolls. Okay. One of the rolls is going to be a perception check. The other roll is going to be a constitution check if Schmidt throws up. Okay, great. <laughs> Do you want to set your uh, own DC no. for the constitution check? You give me one. Okay. Uh, I rolled high, just to let you know. I would probably give you like an eight. Damn it, he makes it. Okay. Damn, that's too bad. Did that, I roll uh, constitution for <laughs> throw up check? Listen, this is you guys penalizing yourself. I'm not <laughs> enforcing Did I it. throw up? <laughs> yeah, if you really want to throw up, you can just you Bro, can do yeah. it. I'm sober, but can I throw up? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 11! 11 to not throw up. Let's go. Cindy, do you want to throw up or not? Speaking of okay? 11. No. <laughs> you guys are fucked up. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't want to throw up. You could have just not asked. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's like I IRL, the, you know, or it's like I, Cindy you feel like a throw up coming on, and then you're like, no, I gotta fight it. You know? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I never I'm a fight throw up. Night. I don't fight <laughs> throw up got hands. Cool. Yeah. So, what was your perception check, Schmidt? Oh, it was uh, an 11. An 11. Yeah, you don't really yes. gather any more information about this commotion. It doesn't seem like dangerous. It just seems like there's an unusual amount of people in the Pokemon Center, and you can hear um, medical carts being like whooshed around, and you hear the pitter patter of chancy footsteps. They're moving fast. They are hurried, chancy footsteps. I'm going to walk up to somebody and ask, what's going on? Okay, you leave your little hostel room and enter the main part of the building? Yes. Great. Did we yes. fuck up? Um, Cindy will follow also. Okay. What you see, Elodie and whoever else decides to join, is a line of people who are holding injured Pokemon. Uh, most of them seem to be sustaining injuries that are like probably just really basic combat maybe they were challenging the do for gym because they all seem just more bruised than they are like on fire or frozen or any elemental things like they just seem kind of kind of beat up and they're all like holding their partners and there's a big old line and the nurse is rushing around and chancy's rushing around um and they have an out of order sign on their traditional 
healing machine that all Pokemon centers are installed with. The lights are on, but for some reason you get the feeling that it's not working. Uh, the nurse is speaking over an intercom. She says, we're so sorry. Our system is down right now. We have to heal all of your Pokemon in the traditional Pokemon Center ways, which I assure you we are very skilled at. We are medical professionals. Please be patient and wait your turn as we get to your treasured party members. And Chansey is pulling the cart and going, Chansey! And is just whirling around and there's a sand shrew on top of the cart and uh, it's got like a bruise on its tail and it's going, and it's just kind of generally chaotic. A lot of people look impatient, but understanding. Um, very strange occurrence this morning. Roll insight to see what could have caused it. Sure. Like the prison energy guy. Sure. <gasps> so true. What's my wisdom? Okay, that's a three. Uh, yeah, three. Not particularly good. Cindy doesn't quite understand what could be going on. Uh, it doesn't look like the healing machine is broken, but clearly it's not working for some reason. I'm going to try and go up to one of the, like, nurses and yeah. ask if there's anything that I can do to help with the healing. Sure. Uh, how how do you ask so? Just be like, excuse me, um, I saw that you guys are healing traditionally um, because the, the normal Pokemon Center uh, machines are down. I have some Pokemon that can help with healing. Do you guys need any assistance? This nurse who is seems to be working alone up front and then there's several other nurses working in the back in medical rooms uh she says oh, well that's very kind of you will i think we'll figure it out i mean if you want to get give more or less like healing band-aids so to speak to the people waiting in line that'd be very nice but unfortunately we can't let you uh, uh let you work but i appreciate the sentiment okay and then i will ask what it, did do you know why the machine is broken they are going to make a roll uh, this nurse says, it's very weird. We asked a technician to come down, but apparently they're getting calls from all over the region. Apparently Pokemon centers all over the place are not able to heal in this much faster time-saving method that involves using Pokeballs. We don't know the cause, and we don't know why it's impacting every Pokemon center in the region. So for now, I'd recommend stocking up on healing items because we don't know how long this is going to last until it's fixed. Hmm. NRG's behind That's this. NRG shit. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Do you say that? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say that out loud. There. Cindy might. <laughs> that sounds like the stuff. work of NRG. <laughs> yeah. I'm this a, is hardcore Nuzlocke mode now. Uh, odd or even for if I say it or not. Okay, do it. I love you guys' initiative on your own rolls today. It's great. I say it. Cindy great. says it. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna do a general kind of roll. Because um, Cindy's also hungover, so like it can be explained away with like. <laughs> she, don't listen to her. No She's a drunk about. child. <laughs> yep, that's better. <laughs> don't don't listen to the drunk child. The crowd rolled their perception particularly well uh, for that, and it causes a bit of an uproar. Some people are like, yeah, she's right. I don't trust those guys. They've been, you know, causing a lot of terror in Hoenn. Who knows what they're up to now? And people argue. They're like, no, no, no. This is the incompetence of the government. This is something that Champion May should have figured out a long time ago. And other people are like, it's okay. It's probably just a weird glitch in the system that the, it's just a natural occurrence. The nurses will figure it out. And everyone's just having kind of a heated debate as they're holding their injured Pokemon. There's probably like... About 20 or so uh, trainers in here who are waiting in line and sitting on couches and they're tending to their injured Pokemon. It's like they're either holding them in their hands. None of them are like in critical condition, but they had a battle and they need to be healed. And uh, it's not going very quickly. Started a fight. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I started a fight. With the commotion, the lot of you can see outside that standing curiously uh, on the other side of the glass doors in the Pokemon Center in the sand outside is three people that you recognize. There is uh, Officer Delaney, there is Elite Four Wally, and there is the strange man in the trench coat, who I guess Schmidt wouldn't recognize uh, because he did not have an interrogation. Um, they're all just kind of standing outside. They're having a calm conversation. Who knows what they're up to? Quick aside, <clears throat> if we are going to court, we should probably, like, not bring the gun with us. <laughs> what gun? Um, Master Ball. <laughs> the master paw. True. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Typically, in in real life court, you they like you can't bring weapons in. 
I don't think so. Well, maybe maybe it's different. I don't know. Maybe they'll let the cut. Uh, let I, I don't know. Maybe they won't even try to take it. I, I don't I, know. Schmidt I looks don't, at his left arm and he's like, "We're gonna have another problem if that's I, the case." I don't think we're gonna bring our bags to court. <laughs> so okay, I just a uh, true true. No, I just thought fine. I would mention it. <laughs> no, that, that's fair. But we're not like going in full backpack. Like, all right, we're we're ready to go. Like. <laughs> True. We're, gonna go, we're gonna go in to trial, then go get our stuff back, and then leave. Sounds good. Okay. We still need um. to find Jim Lee. Right. <laughs> right, but we probably should time. should deal with the court thing first. Uh, yeah, that's on a timetable. So. Okay, we should probably uh, approach the uh, people standing outside. Okay. Mm-hmm. The Paco does that. The three of them immediately kind of turn and acknowledge that the Paco is here. They do notice that Schmidt and Cindy don't look too great. <laughs> they look a little worse for wear. And uh, Delaney speaks up and she says, good morning, Paco. Did you all hear about this with the Pokemon Center? Do you have any idea what's going on? It's like um, energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made another constitution check to see if I throw up. Yeah. Um, I made it. So Schmidt, like, he's going to act like he's going to throw up. Yeah. And then he, he's going to be like, and then he's going to start looking like he's like, no, no, I have to fight it. I have to fight it. I have to fight it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Smells like energy. <laughs> Do you guys say that? <laughs> yes. Cindy says that. Yeah. Cindy says that. Um, roll a perception. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving you a modifier for being hung over. You don't have, just tell me what your normal role is and I will adjust it. 11. 11. You notice out of the corner of your eye, um, this statement grabs the attention of the man in the trench coat. He hasn't spoken to any of you out loud, but he like looks at Cindy just inquisitively. Delaney says, yeah, we thought about that. You know, we got Nolan uh, still, still in the cell. We were trying to get some information out of him. Haven't gotten anything yet. Anyways, we came here because, like, as we said the other night, uh, we we're going to come talk to you about your uh, situation. Have Have you given it much thought? How are you feeling about it? Well, I mean, we still have to stand trial, don't we? Delaney says. Unless. Del- <laughs> Unless. <laughs> uh, uh, Delaney says, well, about that. Uh, we've had some discussions, and thanks to your lawyer, Mr. Sawyer, and Wally as the squadron's governor happening to be present, uh, we've been able to skip over some otherwise necessary bureaucracy. Wally speaks up. Wally says, yes, it's been very efficient. I'm very glad I came to Duford. We'd like to offer you a choice regarding your trial. Your first option is to continue with the arrangement and through trial process as necessary, as you are entitled to a full trial if you so wish. Depending on how the judge finds you, you may be sentenced under a range of conditions, from fines to community service to jail time, trainer license restrictions, any combination of or perhaps none of those outcomes. Your second option is to forego the trial and financially contribute to the reconstruction of the Carpenter family home, a project which has already started. As a group, should you donate 20,000 Poké Dollars by the end of seven days starting today, your charge will be forgiven and the Carpenter family will have a new home. The choice is yours. What do you say? Yeah, um, uh, seven days. Yeah, I think we can do that. <laughs> Wait, where are we gonna get that much money? Listen, do we have do we have time said... to discuss this as a group prior uh, to giving you our final answer, like later today or something? Delaney and Wally and the man in the trench coat all kind of like make eye contact and they huddle and chat for a bit. Um, and Wally says. Yes, if you could get back to us before midnight today, that would be fine. But if you do decide to take the trial, we would have to get those in motion or first thing in the morning oh. tomorrow. So, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wally Delaney and the strange man. Um, Wally says, well, very well. I will be spending time with Officer Delaney and you know where to find us. Have a good day. You too. And the three of them plod along in the sand towards the police department. What will the Quacko Paco do? They right, know so damn how well are we, we don't doing? have 20 listen, grand. Like, listen. <laughs> they I know have, we don't have that. In my inventory, I have, I think, because this is two separate numbers, so I think my personal funds are 1,403 Pokey dollars. 
right. and the funds left over from the sale of the gems and then subtracting the sale of or the purchase of renting the boat i have 7334 so i myself have almost 9000 bogey dollars i kind of- have 800 yeah i have 900 damn i'm rich yeah, uh, don't think you realize you're the money. <laughs> guy from the I have like no, nine just... grand. I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> well, most of that is the group funds from the gem. So, right. Um, but just as I'm like saying, like in my inventory, I should probably I'll put the the group funds in. Uh, anyway, we straight up don't inventory. have that money. Like, but, but we, we have, have a week. A week. What? what you want to double our we gonna income? Make? In a week? Yeah, it's from the entire adventure that we've we've accrued. That you want to do it in like a week? The entire Listen, adventure we're going, is like a month and a half. We're going to Granite Cave anyways. What if there are more precious <laughs> gems in there that we can sell? What a fucking dice roll. All right. I feel like we should go in there and see what we can find before we say yes to that. So are we doing that right now? Like, if we start finding good stuff in the cave, then we can be like, yeah, we could do this in a week. Got a nugget, five grand. <laughs> a nugget? True. You need a nugget, five grand. Also, Big what other nugget. stuff do we have from the uh, the people? The Max Revives, Ultra Balls, PP Up? Because like, I doubt oh, so we can sell that for much. Star pieces, so true. We can sell our star pieces. We don't know how much those are. Let's check on those first. That sounds like the game plan. Good idea. Good idea. I doubt they're much, but no, I believe. I'm a believer. All right, is this the is this the plan? Are we going to Braymart or somewhere else? Braymart seems like the vibe. Yes, he's chill the- with us, right? All in agreement? All in agreement? Aye. Yep. Yeah. Cool. You all enter Braymart. It is just as Mud Bray themed as you remember. Um, there is a groggy Bray and a groggy Paul the Pikachu uh, sitting behind the counter. Paul's on top of the counter. Um, they are nursing a uh, hot coffee. Uh, and they see you come in and uh, Bray says, Welcome to Braymart, but he doesn't even look at you. He doesn't seem to recognize you. Not even if we're wearing the same clothes as last night. Well, he hasn't looked up, is the thing. Ah. Uh, hi, Bray. Howdy. howdy, True. Howdy. Who, who says howdy? Cindy. Roll charisma. 21. <laughs> Very good. Bray kind of tips his cowboy hat and looks up at Cindy and he says, Did I just hear the howdy of an earnest cowboy? And <laughs> makes eye contact with Cindy. <laughs> She's still yeah. wearing her hat, so. Cindy leans, like, plays into it, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Tips her hat. It is at this moment that Bray recognizes you all, and he says, ah, this is the group that came in last night. Welcome back. What can I do for you? We are looking to sell a couple of fine, rare, collectible star pieces. I don't need you to roll, because that is technically true about star pieces, but if you wish to roll, you're welcome to. (laughs) I love these self-chosen rolls today, so I'm going to do it. Okay. <laughs> what am I rolling? What is this? Uh, persuasion, I suppose. It's not... Um, yeah. The things you, you have said cabbage, are all true, so... You should get cabbage to do some, like, cowboy sweet scent to, like, sweeten the, the deal. <laughs> what is cowboy scent? Please. Sweeten the deal. Horse poop. <laughs> Mud bray poop. Fresh hay. Fresh hay. I love the smell of fresh that's, that's hay. That's a much better smell than manure. Do you I wish Cabbage to perform this? Uh, Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, I think she's strong enough where it will just succeed. If you want to roll, you can, but uh, she will be able to produce that scent and perhaps it will sweeten the deal, so to speak. Um, And what did you get on your persuasion? Uh, 15. Okay. Bray says, oh yeah, star pieces, pearls. All, all kinds of that stuff washes up on the beach, and we got treasure hunters who scour up and down, and they come back here and they sell them off. What you got? Show me. How many you got? I believe we each have two. Yes. Uh. Oh, yes, we do each have two, don't we? Yes. So that would be eight total. Yeah, Bray examines them. He says, yeah, these star pieces are in pretty good condition. I don't know where you got them. They look a little different than the ones you find on the beach here. The, that's why they're collectible. They're not from here. Exotic, some would say. Exotic. What what was the merchant ship? Where were they from? Seno? Was that a Seno ship? It was, wasn't it? Yeah. From beautiful, sunny, snowy Seno. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. 
Bray says, oh, yeah, my late shipment. I heard about that. Uh, these ones, these ones will run you 800 apiece. Baby. Times I six. I'm not good at math. That's eight times eight, right? Yeah, it's 6,400. Yeah, that's not bad. It's pretty good. But can we convince him better? Can we? I don't know. If only what? someone had Riz. If only someone had Riz. Hey, Bray, you doing anything? <laughs> Schmidt walks up to Riz up the man, and then he has a wave of nausea, and then I'm going to make the roll. Great. Good for you. Oh, God. Why am I only rolling high on my throw up checks? <laughs> Schmidt, like he like was about to say something, then he like throws up a finger, and then he like runs to his side to like fight his vomit again. Uh, Bray acknowledges this, and he he sees Schmidt look unwell, and he says, "Hey man, uh, I, I I can get you something for that on the house. I don't want you to get sick in the store." He's like, "That would be <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna think condition? too hard." This is going to be the best that I can do right now. He hands you um, a strangely g- gross, but also maybe helpful looking liquid in a plastic bottle that is labeled Pepto Bisharp. You are welcome to take a swig okay. of it if you so wish. Yeah, I'd take a swig of it. Okay. Uh, it helps you feel better. Okay. What was your question, Cindy? I said, is nausea a status condition? Kinda. Your hangover is, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, his offer as it stands is eight hundred per star piece at the moment. I mean, that's some good money. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we can uh, can really get him any any higher on this. Can I roll insight? It, would it be insight, like insight to vibe check to see if we could uh, barter? I yeah, guess? no, insight's appropriate. You're more than welcome to do that. Okay, seventeen. Okay, yeah, Cindy has had to sweet talk her way out of situations where she's gotten in trouble as a child. So she can kind of read the face of particularly merchants. She's quite good at that. She can determine from the vibe of the situation that Bray is open to being bartered with, but as with many shopkeeps, if you push them too far, they'll revert back to the opposite. Um, if you push them too beyond too good of a deal, they will turn around and just say, take it or leave it and have it be something that isn't quite what you want. Uh, can I, I have use her, well, this information we, we, to Elodie? We have a good deal. Don't push it too far. I have an idea. Mm, Two ideas. Uh, mm. I will run them by you first before proposing them. One is the simpler idea, which is solely out, and does she know baby doll eyes? She sure does. Why okay, so that's one option. But that could be conceived as us, you know, messing around my other option is to offer to throw in some if we can find a place i'm sure does like the pokemon center like the like hostel part of it does it have like kitchens yeah they're they're really nothing more than like a sink and a hot plate um but yes oh okay i'm gonna say see if i can find some way throw in a baked good all right a batch of baked goods with the star pieces and this sell them up as an exclusive uh deal but i don't know as far as a proper oven they definitely exist in duford but they will not be at mm-hmm. any places of hospitality um they right. would be in a restaurant or something or in a home but not in the hostel or the hotel mm-hmm. i wonder if we could just kind of be like they are really rare they are from Sinnoh, and try to op- maybe offer like what one 100 more each per like for each one because that's an extra 800 dollars if we get 800 like if we get 100 more for each one True. does that make sense because then that like in the grand scheme of things it's not that much right could we because i feel like that's just like oh can we just get 100 dollars more like i feel like that's like we we ask gimli if he knows of any Sinnoh legends that we could like mm. i don't know yeah. talk up about these star pieces, yeah. I'd be like, oh, yeah. I'm not great on lying. Well, as an Listen. expert miner, <laughs> yeah, he's an expert know... miner. He knows all about gems. He's he could like I know guarantee for a fact the quality that these of these pieces are really formed very close to the top of the sky pillar. <laughs> okay, yeah, something like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, give me, give me persuasion, Gimli. Uh I crit. Bray says, 
Oh, is that the holy temple that's on top of Mount Cornet? That's right. He says, hmm. If that's true, I'll have to kick you another hundred for each star piece, I think. As he continues to evaluate them. I feel like that's where we cut our losses. Are we in agreement? I would agree. Yeah. All right. Deal's a deal. Deal's a deal. Transaction complete. Please erase your star pieces and decide how you want to distribute the monies. Um, Put it in the the (laughs) boat pool. The yeah, pool. I'll uh, I'll add that money to the. How much did we get? Seventy-two hundred, I believe, if my math checks out. If you get nine hundred for each, and there's eight of them, or is there oh, six okay. of them? I, there was eight. There's eight. Yeah, I so, did bad math. Yeah, seventy-two hundred should be what you get, which is a hearty chunk. It's pretty good. Elodie, what's our new total on funds here? Uh, fourteen thousand <clears throat> five hundred and fifty-four. Okay, I believe. Let's okay, get. So we could peruse get pretty close. the beach because he said. Stuff watches, oh, it washes up on the beach all the time. I did my math wrong. Let me amend it real quick. It's just uh, 20 left. 20 less, sorry. Okay. So 14,534. Nice. Whew. Yeah, I guess the ideas are checking the beach, checking Granite Cave. I think, so, didn't somebody say Granite Cave's off limits? So I don't know if we'd be able to get in easily. It, it was before. I don't know if it's off limits now. Or was that a new off limits? Uh, You could roll a history on it, I suppose, if you want to jog your memory. Nine. Nine Okay. You remember it being mentioned a couple of times. You don't fully remember the context. You're not sure. You're not sure if it's permanently off limits or just it was for a bit or there was a different circumstance. But for now, you don't know. Uh, Bray collects the star pieces, hands over the funds. He says, pleasure doing business. Is there anything else I can do for you? Anything you want to buy? Anything you need to sell? Um, I don't think so. Not on my end anyway. No. For now okay I think we're, we're, back. yeah but i think we're pretty stocked up on healing stuff right now right so we should be fine as far as that's concerned great you are free to exit braymart if all business is concluded what's next for the paco you're here in Duford town it's about 10 30 a.m beautiful sunny morning the beach beach time so Duford town uh stretches it's it's a big forested island but all of the inhabitants seem to be on the eastern coast and so there's a beach that stretches from north to south that uh, if you move anywhere inland, you'll be encountered by thick, lush, tropical forest. Um, which which direction of the beach do you want to start at? Probably closer to the forest will probably be less picked over, right? So the forest stretches like inland. Sorry if I didn't make that clear. Um, if you went due east right now, you would get to the shipyard where the dock is. And then the beach more or less just goes straight north, straight south. There's little curves and twists and stuff, but... That's the general is, shape. Is the tide going in or out? <laughs> May roll a nature check. With all of Cindy's survivability. You could flavor it as survival. That's fine. That's totally reasonable. I get advantage? Uh, no, you get expertise. No, or, yeah, you, okay. should, you should just get double proficiency. Because it's not life safe In this moment, it is not life-saving no. information. There could be a situation where the tide was cri- it, life critical, yeah, but right now it's not. Uh, I'm bad at math. What's eight plus nine? Uh, 17. 17? Yeah, that's what I got. That's pretty good. Um, Cindy may not be like particularly book smart, but she is pretty in touch with the environment, especially in the Hoenn region. Um, rather than looking directly at the waves, Cindy looks up at the moon. She notices that um, it is kind of falling out of the sky because it's early morning, but it's still visible and it is waxing. It is growing um, in its fullness. And that seems to suggest that uh, at the moment, based on her knowledge of, you know, the region, uh, it is a high tide at the current time. You can expect it to adjust in about 12 hours based on your role. So it is currently high tide, and it will be going out over the next 12 hours. Yes, correct. Cool. So when the tide's going out is when you find shit on the beach. To the beach. <laughs> beach. <laughs> we beach walking? Let's yeah. do it. Um, give me Schmidt. Give me a D20. I'm not going to tell you for what, but give me a D20. Uh, I got a natural 20. Natural 20. You Like, this baby... Togepi omelet just loves Quacko. They are inseparable to the point where Quacko is probably a little annoyed. Um, you're welcome to flavor that how you wish, but Quacko cannot, or sorry, omelet cannot stop like chirping and following directly behind Quacko. Um, it's kind of cute, and omelet feels very safe, which is great. But this newborn baby obsessed with Quacko. That's all. I think Quacko's kind of into it. Yeah, Quacko's probably a good dad. You know, that's all. Just that update. Yeah. Um, everyone makes it to the beach. 
Uh, there are some fishermen with their lines out. High tide is a great time to find some Pokemon out on the beach. There's some boats kind of deeper out in the water. Seems like there might be some fishing boats happening. Uh, you get close to the shipyard and you can actually see these nuts and it's fully repaired. Seems like uh, you all helped out pre- the other night to help Brandon get it all patched up and it looks like it's ready to go. Um, and it even has the new decal of the two C dots on uh, t- on the hull towards the front sides. It's very cute. Um, yeah, there's ships in the water. There's fishermen out and about. There's some kids uh, in the water. They're swimming. Or there's there's a boy in an inner tube. He's just kind of sloshing around in the waves. Uh, there are wingle floating overhead. It's a nice nice morning. You also see a man wearing a pretty comically large ca- cowboy hat uh, sitting in a beach chair. Um, sipping on a cocktail of some sort in a little umbrella with a little umbrella tiki thing in it, you know? And alongside him is a familiar-looking shuckle um, that is munching on some berries. He does not notice you. Is that Clementine Sawyer? Do you the approach lawyer? him? <laughs> yeah, I'll walk up and be like, hey, I still have that phone on for him, don't I? Yeah, you sure do. Did yeah, I'll just walk up and be like, hey, it? shoot the shit for a little bit and then try to give him his phone back. Yeah, you approach him, and he says, Oh, Schmidt, my boy, it's good to see you and the rest of the Paco. Hello. And he picks up Liz, and uh, they tuck all their noodles into their shell, and then Clementine, like, tilts the shell into the glass, and liquid comes out of Liz's shell and, like, empties into the cocktail glass. It looks like a very sweet kind of nectar. Apparently, Liz has been brewing some sort of berry juice. Uh, Clementine says looks like we did a pretty good job i spoke with delaney and uh i understand that you all are offered the chance to evade the trial i would say i worked pretty hard on that one and he laughs and he takes a sip of his drink yeah, yeah i guess the yeah. hot pot's really coming up with the money but otherwise yeah it's a pretty good deal clementine says i think it's a great deal i mean here's the thing if i i'm not fully familiar with your situation i, I was present for your interrogations schmidt you weren't there are you doing okay buddy i actually haven't seen you for a while Schmidt, like, kind of holds his left arm. He's like, yeah, I'm doing all right. Okay. Uh, Clementine says, good to hear. Anyways, talking with Delaney about it and me knowing the whole court system, I think you should take the the payment option because the truth of the matter is you could go to trial, you could be arranged, and you could be found guilty and then just still owe that much anyways. So it's probably in your best interest to take Wally's deal. I think that's a very generous man. I think so. Yeah, we're already leaning towards there. And, yeah, and don't we want to contribute money to uh or at least something to Carpenter's the family anyways house. yeah clementine There's takes a sip of his drink with labor but he sips it and he says or and quietly like under his breath he says or you know you could go to trial and you could be cleared of all of your convictions i mean that's an option as well but i think the safest route is to is to just pay it off and i mean it's charitable right i mean whether or not it was out of malice or pure accident uh, the locals here probably need a little a little recovery, a little support. I mean, have you been to the residential district last night? There was Corsola everywhere. I don't know where they all ran off to right now, but the ecosystem <laughs> it's, it's definitely having an experience. And he sips his cocktail. Oh, wild. Anything else for the Paco with Mr. Clementine Sawyer? Uh, no. I'll just kind of leave him to Drink do what he does. Chuckle juice. Yep. Okay. Did you yeah. give him the phone? Oh, shit, yeah. I'll hand him the phone and be like, here, you told me to get this back to you. It's been a long time coming, but here you are. Oh, he takes it and he says, oh, Schmidt, thank you. I, I honestly forgot about it. Yeah, that, that Nicholas boy. Uh, I even followed up with his lawyers a little afterwards when they said they couldn't do anything about it. And they said they couldn't get a hold of him. He's just nowhere to be seen. So uh, he sounded pretty, uh, pretty charged. If you end up seeing him, let me know. That made me a little nervous of things foreboding but okay <laughs> clementine Nick pulls is a- the big bad evil guy <laughs> clementine pulls out uh, a, piece, a notepad and he flips through it real quick and he says oh, i got sand on my notepad uh, and he says didn't nick say something on the phone along the lines of i will get far-fetched back no matter what it takes and he looks at schmidt oh no yeah something like that hmm. clementine said well, I, you know, some law systems would treat that as a threat, so I would just keep your eyes open. That's all. Everything's going to be fine. And he picks up Liz and gives them a smooch on their noodle. I want to give Liz a little pat. Yeah, you do that. Um, roll an insight. I'm immediately looking for Quacko. Okay. Uh, eight, 18. 18. Liz is having a good time. Liz is feeling very spoiled. Uh, Liz misses you a little bit, but in general, Liz is 
enjoying the beach. This is like a natural shuckle habitat is a sandy beach. Yeah. Um, and hanging out with this guy who just loves them. Liz is happy. Oh, you're doing great, girl. I can see it. There's a lot of love in that, man. You said you're looking for Quacko. Yeah, I just want to make sure he's close by. Quacko is right beside you, and Omelette is right beside Quacko. Quacko is currently, like, flailing his sword around um, on the blunt end, and uh, Omelette is, like, doing very, very short hops, trying to swat at it like a little baby with, like, a toy. Okay, that's very cute. I imagine it's been, like, a train of, like, Schmidt's been walking the Quacko behind him and then Omelette chasing Quacko. It's exactly that, Uh, yes. Schmidt's gonna mix up the train now. He's gonna make sure Quacko is walking in front of him, and he's gonna follow with Omelette behind <laughs> Quacko. Great, yeah. Just so he can keep an eye on him. Quacko, the leader of the Quacko Paco, leading the Paco. Who would have thought? Yeah, you do that. Um, anything else for Clementine? What direction on the beach are you going? Uh, for context, you're kind of in the middle of Doofer Town. South leads to um, the beach kind of closes off into the forest. Heading north, you get into the residential area, and then you get to Granite Cave. Or you could go out to the sea. You could go east in the water. Your call. I think Cindy will like kick her shoes off and roll her pants up and like get just into where like the waves are kind of coming up and leaving shore mm-hmm. and just starts looking. And what's your stuff. method of looking? Are you just peering through the waves? Or are you like reaching through the sand? What are you doing? Starting with like looking, but then if anything looks even remotely interesting, trying to have feel around and see what's up. Okay, yeah, roll, um, I guess. Are you, like, looking with your eyes or are you feeling with your fingers, I guess, is the real question. Eyes. Okay, yeah, give me a wisdom check then. Fifteen. Fifteen's pretty good. Yeah, you're parsing through the sand. You're looking for uh, some sort of treasure or anything. Um, just waiting in a little bit, waiting a little deep to see what you can find in the high tide. And your hand latches on to something with a strange texture. It's a little soft. It's a little scaly, very like kind of fatty. And it's in the shape of of a cone sticking out of the sand. Uh, what do you do with this? Pick it up and look at it. Sure. Um, make a strength check. Nat 20. Wow. Impressive. Um, Cindy latches on to this strange fleshy cone that is in the sand um, with both of her hands and mm, pulls it. And then there's a pop. It goes and then uh, flinging out of the sand, mud flying everywhere is a strange Pokemon that she just pulled up. Uh, It is a pink Pokemon with a quadrupedal body and a very stupid face. It looks like it is not fully cognizantly present. Um, Its legs are just kind of hanging and it looks around and uh, it lets out a yawn. It seems like non-threatening. It also does not seem necessarily like treasure. He's a little guy. He is just a little guy. I show everybody. Hey guys, look what I found. Uh, uh roll a d twenty, just a straight one. Uh, also a twenty. Oh, okay, yeah. Everyone on the beach sees it, uh, and you're so passionate and enthusiastic. Uh, people are like cheering and applauding. It sounds like a made up thing. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it's like true story. Like, sure. But no, it's true. Everyone's like, yeah, that's so cool. A fisherman comes up. He says, oh, you don't see slowpoke around here very often. Um, there's uh, a rascally looking child, um, a, a girl with like sharp teeth. Uh, she's wearing a swimsuit. She was just playing in the waves and she runs up and she grabs slowpoke and she says, give it to me. And she's pulling on it. You should be gentle with that slowpoke. Uh, Does it belong to her? Because if the guy said it's not from around here, it might belong to somebody. It's like, is it your? Is this your slowpoke? Um, you're just asking with words. Yeah. She says, "I want it. Give it to me." Well, that's not very nice. Nope. Okay. She seems very upset and uh grumpy and frustrated, and she's going to keep tugging on it. Uh, additionally. There's a man who's kind of like strolling up. He's wearing sandals. He's in like a, a black dress shirt with the sleeves rolled up and the, it's unbuttoned kind of Schmidt style. He's wearing sunglasses. He has slicked back black hair um, and he strolls up and he says, oh, hey, you found a slowpoke. I'm interested in that. We are charging slow for poke. viewing of the slowpoke. I don't Set think we like can actually kiss. do that. <laughs> okay, hear me out. It's like a kissing booth, but it's <laughs> slowpoke. Oh, no. <laughs> It's not even our Slowpoke. Look, we have Pokemon that we could do that with. It seems that Slowpoke doesn't even, like, register this attention. As far as you know, Slowpoke thinks they're still fully body deep in the sand with their tails sticking out from above. So who knows (laughs) what's on their empty mind? 
Schmitz, give me an insight check. On the guy who wants him? Just in general. I just want Schmidt to roll something. Uh, 19. 19 is quite good. Um, Schmidt is kind of, you know, tending the situation. Not tending to it. He's witnessing it while also cautiously making sure that Quacko and Omelette are accounted for. Um, he can kind of intuit that the little girl who wants Slowpoke, she, she just wants a cute pink creature. She's just not involved at all. Schmidt gets the feeling that this man in the sunglasses who walked up, he kind of wants something nefarious with the Slowpoke. His intentions are not good. Oh, no. The man says, I'll give you some good money for it. How much? <laughs> how how much does morality it, cost? <laughs> it, does, does Schmidt know about the whole slow poke tail situation? Undoubtedly, considering he's from Johto and he's proficient in history. He definitely yeah. is aware of slow poke tail as a luxury item. Hmm. Schmidt looks at the slow poke. And then he looks back at the Paco, and then he looks back at the guy, and he says, "How much?" Ooh. Uh, this the guy is going to make a roll based on the Paco. He's going to be thinking about it. He says, "This little poke seems to be in below average condition. Seems like it's been in the sand for a little too long. I'll give you three hundred Poke dollars for it." Oh no! No, lame. He uh, shrugs and he says, your loss. And he leaves yeah. you. He turns around. That's fine. Bye. Oh, bitch. Goddamn. <laughs> Little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you guys trying to start a fight? Then he can throw hands. I got two nat oh 20s in a row. God. Okay. Uh, no, no, he's. Cindy he, will not throw hands. No. It seems like he's given up on it. But so uh, Cindy's standing here at the beach holding a slowpoke by the tail out in the ocean. What's next uh, for the pack? I think I would readjust how i'm holding him so he's not just like held by the tail okay please describe how he's being held do you hold him like a kitty cat do you hold him like uh at his armpits like outstretched you know um for context how heavy is the average slow poke give me one moment um he is based on a hippo he's kind of chonky yeah um this is a smaller than average slow poke but he's almost four feet long and he's about 70 pounds so pretty heavy Cindy got that <laughs> real good strength. Yeah, she's probably feeling a little bit of adrenaline or maybe like the hangover is fueling her somehow. I don't know. Uh, maybe I feel like I'd adjust so it's like under his armpits, but like part of the top of the body, like over her, like both arms underneath him and then like the rest of the body, like hanging down. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like no. almost holding him like around his stomach. Like. Yes, that is very cute. He has not made eye contact with any of the members of the PACO. Uh, he's breathing heavily and just vibing, just having a good time. I think I'll set him next to Elodie because Elodie does like water type shit. Okay. You put him on the ground on his four legs and he doesn't look up at Elodie. He's staring at her ankles. I found him. Hey, little dude. Elodie. <laughs> found him. <laughs> I found him. Um, I found him like this. <laughs> do you say, hey, little dude to Slowpoke? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, a solid six seconds later, uh, he tilts his head up and looks up at Elodie and goes, huh? <laughs> God, what a charmer. Him. Cindy runs back into the water to okay. like look for more stuff. Sure. Before I make Cindy do a check, is anyone else rolling anything, doing anything, checking anything, just exploring their character's mind for anything? No. Okay. Elodie? Um, I will become this Slowpoke's short-term guardian to make sure that the creepy dude doesn't come back. Okay. Give me uh, three perception checks. Schmidt, three. Gimli, and Elodie. Sorry, okay. oh. Cindy. Cindy, I lied. Not Elodie. No perception from Elodie right now. I crit again. <laughs> okay. I got a 12. Perception. Okay. Perception. Dirty 20. Okay. Gimli, you notice that the man who wanted the slowpoke, he hasn't gone that far. He's kind of standing a little ways down, but he keeps turning and like looking at the slowpoke. Yeah, he's uh, waiting for us to leave. <laughs> Schmidt, you notice a Pokemon flying in the sky that is not a Wingle and is kind of standing out. You don't know the exact species, but you know it doesn't belong in Duford Town, and you know it is no, it's native to Johto. Um, Johto and Kanto, it kind of flies around between there. Um, you don't get a great look at it, but it is fully black uh, and is not a Wingle. You're not sure what it is. It is flying north. It looks a little strange. Anything you wish to do with that knowledge? It might belong to Nefarious Guy. Hmm. I will make the party aware of it. 
And I say, let's carry on our business, but let's keep an eye out. Mm -hmm. I agree. Very good. Uh, You got a dirty 20? Yes. Okay. Um, You reach your hand into the sand, and you feel the hard shell of a bivalve. You feel um, the carapace of a creature that has a shell. Um, It is roughly the size of a grapefruit. Do you pull it out of the sand? Yeah. Okay. Um, You roll a strength, actually. Nat one. Nat one. Nice. Oh, um, Cindy, it doesn't move. <laughs> Cindy reaches her hand into the sand and tries to get a good um, good grip on whatever this clam-like creature is, um, and it swiftly opens and closes on her finger, dealing uh, 15 points of pressure clamping damage as her finger almost uh, feels like it gets chopped off. <laughs> uh, it is very badly cut. Um, she is definitely bleeding. Uh, her her right pointer finger is in bad shape. Yeah, she gets uh, it's emerged from the sand, but it's still in the water. Uh, it's fully back closed now, but it's clearly a water type Pokemon that is in a shell. Up to you on what your next order of action is. Do I know what it is? Uh, maybe give me Pokemon handling. I suppose I don't know what else it would be for you. I don't know. Yeah, just a general. Well, that yeah, just a wisdom check. Just a general wisdom check. Nat 20. Holy shit. Just extremes, dude. Yeah. I Listen, I don't know. <laughs> um, swinging. You know for sure that this is a clam pearl. It is native to the Hoenn region. Oh, does it have a pearl? I wonder. I know, like, it is one, but, like, could it produce pearls? I don't know how they work. Perhaps. Who knows? What is it? even a pearl in the Pokemon universe? Well, they wash up pearl, on the shores. Like yeah. Right. I, I mean, I meant that more rhetorically, you know? Like, what is the pearl, you know? I think the pearl was uh, the friends we made along the way. True! I, um, I'm gonna try and pick up the clam pearl again. Okay, give me a dex check this time. You have a Hunover modifier, so it will probably be worse than you think. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, this clam pearl is definitely agitated and is looking to clamp on you further. You're able to kind of, like, pick it up, not to your chest, but, like, as you're knelt over in the water, you have it in your hands, but it's kind of thrashing about. It seems like it's in a bad mood. Uh, can I throw it towards Elodie? You can underhand toss it at this point, yes. Yes. Okay, make a strength check, or dex check, your choice. Also, Elodie, if you intend to catch it, you have to make an, a dex check also. Why not, man? Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Could I argue that this is athletics? Yes. It's a toss. Sick. Do you that have plus three instead Are you proficient in athletics? I guess. Crazy. That's cool. Okay. Kind of so makes athletic. sense. Like hiking, I 13. think, is athletics. 13. Okay, another 13. Um, Elodie, what did you get? I got a 15. Yeah. Okay. Cindy underhand tosses the clamp roll and flings it into Elodie's hands. Um, and Elodie's holding an angry clamp roll. I have I... a roll. Thank you, Cindy. Um, I will have cabbage and mitt. What do clams eat? Hmm. Cabbage is so is versatile, dude. That's so funny. Cabbage is so versatile. She loves making smells. It's just yeah. like her vibe. <laughs> Maybe like lavender, just for calm vibes. That is the go-to for calm vibes. Let's do let's do a lavender scent and see if we can maybe calm this uh, clamp roll down a little bit. Sure. Uh, roll lavender, performance for that. Lavender, lavender wizard oh, show. money gang. Lavender wizard money gang. We love we casting love spells. Casting smells. We love casting smells. Wait, that's hilarious, actually. <laughs> uh, that's a 15. Okay. Um, clamp roll settles down a little in your hands. Um, but it does not open up, and you can hear kind of a faint squeaking inside. It is agitated, but it's not, like, writhing. That's totally understandable, given its current situation. Yeah. Gimli, give me a d20. Um, what would make it... <laughs> One. I, I was... One. Okay, nothing happens. What? Continuality. I'm trying to think of something, like, to make it open its mouth so I could even check if it has a pearl in there. No food is an option, but I don't probably have any food on me. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Who knows? Good. Do you think Jack is at, like smelling, like sniffing and searching? I, I don't know. How good do you think Jack is? He 
You can find out. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like Jack has sniffing abilities to some degree. Perhaps. He's a kitty. All right. I let Jack out. Okay. Jack is here. Explain. We're looking for treasure. Okay. Um, fine. Jack is uh, standing at the beach, and he looks at the water, and he looks at Cindy, and he like vigorously shakes his head no. It seems like Jack does not like the waves. Is there anything farther up the beach that you could find as far as treasure stuff goes? You could try. If you want to instruct him to look further, like, more towards the land. I do that. Okay. Jack more cautiously, like, physically agrees um, and marches past uh, Quacko and Omelette. He actually sniffs Omelette for a second. And, like, curiously, because Jack hasn't met Omelette before. And then starts sniffing around and digging in the sand. Uh, that's not close to the water. Ella, did you have a plan for this clam pearl? Um, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, it's what it's. Clam pearl eat. What do clam pearl eat? Because if we could find something else that they eat, we could. True. Eat it. Cindy is on find something to feed this clam pearl duty. Okay. Oh, sick. Can I roll I'm for putting you on it? Find something to feed this clam pearl. Sure. Yeah. Please roll. Uh, I guess a wisdom. Thirteen. Okay. So. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out, are you just looking for something that might be clam food, or are you trying to consider in your brain what clams eat? Maybe just like cert- like just like Cindy vibes, like just search for something that looks like it would be okay. yeah, clam that, pearl edible. That feels more Cindy-ish. Um, yeah, she digs around in the sand and finds some seaweed, just some seaweed like strewn about uh, that washed up on shore. That's the first thing that she finds. Do you have a plan for it? Start grabbing handfuls of it. Okay. Schmidt, give me a wisdom check. Flat seven. Flat seven. Okay. You see a man walking on the beach towards the party who you recognize. It's almost like you met him last night. Uh, You don't remember his name, but he looks up and he looks at you with a look of familiarity. And uh, he is walking along the beach with a Pokemon that you haven't seen before. Uh, It is quadrupedal and is primarily a mouth. It is orange in color. Um, And it seems like he's going to approach you. Uh, Do you attempt to disengage or is he going to speak with you successfully? I'll point a finger at him and be like, hey, and then let him take over the rest. Okay. He says, oh, Schmidt, good to see you. We had a great night last night. Thank you so much for keeping me company. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> he. I'm gonna raise an eyebrow at Schmidt. <laughs> he clearly knows this man and his name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he looks over at Elodie, who's holding this clam pearl. Uh, he pulls out his magnifying glass and he gets really close to clam pearl, and he says, "Oh, well, that's a bona fide clam pearl. What are you gonna do with it? You gonna eat it?" Um. No, I wasn't planning on it. I was going to see if I could find if it had a pearl inside it. This man pulls back his magnifying glass and adjusts his shirt to straighten it up from bending over. And he says, well, surely if it's alive, it's got a clam. It's got a pearl in it. That's what clam pearls all about. You know, those pearls are quite valuable. That's what I'm hoping for. He nods his head. He says, mm-hmm, they're about 10 times more valuable than the pearls made by Shelter. They're also where Spoink get their pearls. So people are always looking for them. I did not know that. The man says, yep. Pretty fetch you a pretty penny. It's a shame you gotta kill the clam pearl to get to it. Oh, oh, oh. okay. Uh, but then mm. we could eat it. Dang, are spoinks just murdering clam pearls in the wild? Holy fuck! Do you ask this to this man? Like, I mean, does that mean that like the spoinks in the wild to get a pearl they have to find and kill a clam pearl? Uh, the man or wait for one to die natural causes I guess the man uh, shakes his head no he says no spoink aren't killers Uh, the truth is is that grumpig will harvest fell deceased natural causes clam pearl from the beach and will provide them to their children ah that's a lot less dark I appreciate that okay (laughs) he nods his head he says yep I'm a bit of a treasure expert he says oh I haven't introduced myself to any of you besides Schmidt my name's Omari I came up here to check out Granite Cave. I heard there's some great treasure in there, and as a treasure enthusiast, I decided to take a little beach walk. Give me some pointers as for finding treasure, because I've been trying to find treasure. And Boy, so far, man. all I found is this guy, pointing to Slowbro, and this thing, pointing to Clam Pearl. Schmidt, did you have something to say? 
I was just gonna keep talking to him. I'm like, man, did you come at a great time? Because we're also hunting for treasure. Uh, Omari says, "Ha! Huh, I knew I liked you, Schmidt." Uh, to answer your question, young lady, if you're looking for treasure right now, the best you're going to get are these clam pearls uh, who failed to make it back into the deep sea when the tide rolled in. Uh, if you're looking for treasure, the best time to do it is very early in the morning or very early at night before high tide comes around. Then you get all the little treasures that are on the beach. And most importantly, when the beach is crowded, you're not going to find many treasures because all of the Pokemon that provide treasures run away when there's a bunch of people around. I see that you caught the clam pearl. If you're going to get that pearl and you're not going to eat it, I would gladly take that off your hands. Uh, mm, uh, I mean, we did eat Pokemon gang. something before. Like we have eaten. Listen, but Pokemon we, meat. but we, we didn't have any it, like yeah. hand in that. Yeah, harvest it. <laughs> it's less guilty when you just let someone else do it for you, and then okay. Exactly. How much? How much money would we get from from a clam pearl pearl? He takes a look at it and he says, well, it depends on the, the sheen, the size and the age of the clam pearl when harvested. The younger clam pearls tend to have better pearls. Uh, it could run you anywhere between 500 and 1000 Pokemon dollars. Oh, is that worth it? Mm. I feel like it's not worth it. What was that price again? Between 500 and 1000. Yeah, depending on age. Yeah, if it were closer to like 5000, I'd consider. I feel like uh, how much are we at? 14k right mm -hmm. or yeah, well that's what you have in the group fund right right but we probably have a little bit more than that if we pull all of our other money it probably has to be like 16 probably um, yeah i have shy of a thousand i'm gonna turn to uh omari mm -hmm. and i'm gonna be like omari my friend whose name i remembered what would you do in this situation give us a little guidance Omari says, well, if I was looking for treasure and or a meal, it'd depend on how desperate I am for either of those. In all honesty, this clam pool was probably having a tough day. They got stuck in the sand trying to get back to the ocean when the tide rolled in. Uh, if I were truly hungry, and he gestures to his belt pack, he says, probably grab my pickaxe and start cracking at it. He says, I hope I don't ever find myself financially desperate enough to need the pearl for finances, but, you know, it's there if you need it. And he looks and he says... Where'd you get the slow poke? You really find these back to back? Sure did. Uh, yeah. And everybody wants the slow poke. He says, I bet a lot of people would want that clam pearl too. He seems like you got a knack for treasure hunting. This is a bad time as well. I feel I'm like Granite Cave hand. might be a good option for, for us as well. Like you said, clam pearls are like a good direction, but we could enter Granite Cave. Uh, Omari I mean, nods and he says, yeah, Granite Cave. I didn't get too deep in my exploration. I was going to head back maybe later tonight or tomorrow, but there's lots of rare minerals and gems that can be found deeper in the cave. But the, what scares me is I just got my little buddy Pinchy here and he looks down to the ground and there's like a one foot tall, like bug like creature with a big old mouth. And he says, uh, he's my only partner. We're not particularly strong enough to fight off those monsters. And furthermore, it gets very dark in there. So, uh, we, we only checked out the first floor or so and, uh, I'm, I think I'm going to stick to the beach during my trip here in Duford Town. I mean, if what you know, if? we're, we're, we're big chill and when it comes to fighting monsters, you know. We can escort what him. If? Yeah. And then we can, like, work out a deal where it's like if he finds, like, good stuff because he knows what you're talking about, we get, like, cut a deal. Do you propose or you this? Can pay us to escort him. Yeah. It's like, well, we could use your expertise in the cave and we can definitely fight off some monsters if you, uh. And provide light. And provide light, yeah. Cookie be light. Who wants? Well, yeah, like, who who wants to give me a persuasion for this? Rubs hands together. Yeah, you got it. The Rizmeister. The Rizard. The Rizard. The Rizard. Greasy Tim's here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> uh, the true, true Rizard. The true yeah. Rizard. Uh, that's a fourteen. Okay, he uh he strokes his his white beard. Sorry, he doesn't have a beard. His mustache. He says. Hmm, I'm open to a little adventure. Sure, if we get down there and you keep me alive and we find any treasure, I'll give you a cut. Works for me. What's, what's the cut? Hold on, hold on here, bub. <laughs> what, what, what are we talking here? He says, well, for one, I can't actually promise you that we find anything because I haven't gone down there. It's just rumors. I've heard rumors. That being said, the group of you, I'll give you 60% of whatever it's worth. Okay, 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 okay. I'm good with that. That's a good I'm deal. Good with yeah. that. I was uh, going to throw it in his life over 50-50, so 60 is pretty good. Uh, 
I mean, oh. I was going to say, like, would it be in bad taste to just be like, hey, we need to come up with $6,000 more dollars, ideally, today? No, no, we don't want to seem desperate. But we okay. are. But right. we are. <laughs> right, but you don't want to negotiate from a point of desperation. Also, That's we don't true. need to come up with it today. But we need to be in a position where it's, like, possible. I mean, it already is kind of possible now, because we're we closed the gap by, like, half of what we needed. Okay, should we take slow bro with us so he doesn't get yeah tailed do we take clam pearl with us for the same reason uh well clam pearl got stuck is there any way we could like yeet yeet her farther out into the ocean right is that where they want to be yes I sure How can. Does oh work? i can but we that. play yeah i was gonna say Clacko. oh we have a pokemon that can actually put it farther out not just throw oh, this I clam pearl discus the clam pearl out into the ocean <laughs> whatever you guys decide I, I, th I think uh, Quacko deposit is safer. Okay. Uh, I, Somebody I, hold I, Omelette. I put Omelette with Elodie. Okay. And then I also put Quacko with Elodie and say, make sure he doesn't get hurt. And then I walk over to the Clam Pearl. I get out in a little bit deeper water mm -hmm. and I send out Diana. Diana hits the field for the first time after being captured. A magnificent, beautiful, lustrously scaled Gyarados is here. Uh, it turns to Faye Schmidt and it lets out a friendly but monstrous roar. Um, some of the people in the water at the beach are like, ah, because they like don't know it's a trainer's Gyarados and they start rushing away from it. Diana, we're going to we're going to take this clam pearl. I guess I need to unlodge it. And then we're going to take a little trip out to deeper waters. What do you mean unlodge it? Well, it was stuck or something, right? Uh, its shell is firmly closed, but it's not stuck. It's it's carryable, oh, okay. handheld. Yeah, I'll just pick it up, tuck it under my arm. Okay. Jump uh, on Diana. Cool. You should be able to do this no problem. Are you looking for a specific spot or something, or do you want to make a roll for success, or you just it, it, you'll be able to put a clamp roll in the ocean? There's a there's a there's the that bird still following us, right? Following or make just kind of hovering around? I don't know. Make a perception check. Uh, 14. Uh, you do not currently see it in the sky. I want to go out far enough to where I don't really see people. Maybe, like, don't see the shore. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to hunk it there. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to do that. No issue. It will just take probably, like, and it's pretty fast, right? So maybe, like, five, ten minutes. Yeah. Okay, sure. It's 40 swim speed, so. Yeah, you, can, you you're very fast. Diana That's is insane. powerful. Yeah. Um, sure, you do that. Um, anyone on the beach, is there any sort of activity or action you're taking at the moment? Um, I mean, if we're bringing the slow puck with, we should figure out how we're going to do that, because it's pretty heavy to just carry around. That's true. Man, I wish we had a wagon. <laughs> true. <laughs> oh. I, I miss Cray Dilly Flyer. Yeah. Okay, after this 20k thing, I think we definitely need to make it a priority to buy a new wagon. So true. <laughs> Yeah, so true. The Paco just hasn't been the it. same, honestly. Not since the loss of the wagon. I feel uh, like I every will... three to five episodes, we're like, damn, what if we had a wagon right now? True. I will um, take out grape juice, and the Slowpoke can ride on grape juice's back. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. Slowpoke uh, doesn't, again, doesn't fully register exactly what's happening. Uh, and if grape juice begins to move, it might not have the best grip <laughs> at the moment. Uh, it may hmm. need to be secured because um, Grape Juice's gait isn't particularly elegant. Oh, I'll, little... I'll tie him down. I have 30 feet of rope and he's too dumb to respond. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Without issue, you can tie Slowpoke to Grape Juice. Uh, Grape Juice is wearing a little Slowpoke backpack. Yep. <laughs> I'm just kidnapping this. That's like oh, wait. We're Pokemon. saving his life. <laughs> it's true. literally that, that TikTok audio that's like, oh, are you kidnapping me? Oh, no, no, no. Can I leave? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The second for the second new time. New TikTok. New TikTok. Maybe. Um, I need a perception check from Cindy now. Is it Ten. Okay. Somewhere to the north, you hear a cat yowl. Wow. <laughs> you do not see Jack. Well, that's. But you've heard Jack. Can I run in the direction of Jack? Yeah, you can Jack. run north. Jack. Jack. Never let go. Uh, is everyone joining, or is this just a Cindy moment? I don't know. I, think go, go I know Schmidt is out to sea, so yeah, you're I a little mean, busy. It, 
Shit. Okay. Yeah. If everyone's going, I'll go, you know? Okay. Yeah, let's go see what Jack found. Okay. Um, you run forward and you leave uh, Clementine Sawyer and behind, as well as the strange sketchy man and the upset girl, but Omar, he does follow you. Um, you see Jack is snarling at a very funny looking crab that has large, uh, enlarged claws that look to be like boxing mitts and it seems like jack is a little beat up and a little bruised jack has taken 35 points of fighting type damage as he's entered a scrap with a crab brawler how many damage 35 it seems like the crab brawler isn't fully healthy either but uh they were scrapping for a minute yeah they were scrapping what's your plan cindy what are you doing i don't know what fights fight good well (laughs) well then (laughs) Double so kick. True. You're gonna instruct a double kick to come out. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Roll to hit. Shit. I forgot about that. You forgot a roll to hit. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> um. <laughs> ten. Does a ten hit? Ten does not hit. Uh, Jack whiffs <laughs> as he leaps into the air and kicks into uh this crab brawler and. Uh, this funny. Oh, I need to try again because it's two hits. You do roll twice. Yeah, right? that's correct. Yeah. Hell yeah. This is. Are we in initiative right now? No, it's a one v one. Does a thirteen hit? Um, a thirteen does not hit. Unfortunately, uh, this this is not going particularly well. It seems like Jack is having a tough time. Cabraler will swing back as it pounds its fists into Jack. Um, does a seventeen hit? Yes. Okay. Um, Jack takes another 33 points of fighting type damage as he gets pummeled in his little kitty cat face. This crabrawler is kind of just standing in the sand with its funny blue boxing gloves, um, and it's moving them like an idle pose in a fighting game, kind of like face-to-face with Jack. Um, It seems better equipped to this type of combat than Jack is at the moment. Do you want help, Cindy? Yes. Okay. Very sad and defeated. Uh, yeah, you're welcome to roll initiative for this Cabrawler, if you so wish. If anyone who wants to participate. At this moment, we will say that Schmidt found a suitable location for uh, the Clam Pearl and is able to return to the beach if he so wishes. Yeah. Do you have any sort of ceremony as you lo- as you put it in the water? Do you throw it in? Do you drop it in? Yeet. Just yeet it directly into the water? Yeah. Okay. I do a yeet roll. You- yeah, sure. Give me a yeet roll. Uh, it's a zero strength modifier. That's natural 18. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Schmidt chucks it into what is presumably the deep ocean because the tide is kind of choppy and he can't see the bottom of the water at all. Um, and you get a weird sense of gratitude from the clam pearl as it just sinks and sinks. Sick. Cool. Okay, we turn around. Okay, you can head back to the beach. Everyone who's helping Cindy roll initiative. I got an eight. Okay. Uh, 16. Okay. Cindy? I have to roll initiative. Yeah, sorry, you do. Seven. Great. Uh, Up first is Gimli. Gimli. Uh, If you want. Yeah. I feel like the first couple of turns would be just movement, right, to get back. That's correct. Yeah, we can put you in. Okay, that works. Gimli, you're up first. How do you deal with this crab? I'm going to pull out lasagna. Lasagna? Okay. Lasagna. I'm going to look to actually suspend this crab brawler in the air Ooh, with psychic powers fun sure um give me an intelligence roll i'm gonna say dc 12 probably not too hard i got a 12 nice that'll do it okay and i'm just gonna hold crab brawler in place for the turn cool i like that elodie it's on you what are you doing um i'm gonna have cabbage do a healing kiss on jack Ooh. How sweet and kind and nice. Yeah, please roll. Much needed. Thank you. Yeah, please roll the amount that you heal. Which Pokemon is doing this, by the way? Cabbage. Cool. Thank you. That'll be 16. 16 points of heal. I believe so, yes. Okay, great. You may apply that, Cindy. Anything else for Elodie? Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll just do that for now. Okay. Uh, Cindy, Jack is here. The crab is suspended in the air. It's th- flailing its fists around as it or trying to it's it it like feels like it's in like molasses or something it can't really get a good uh good grip of what's going on how high off the ground is it uh high enough for jack to hit you know or like low enough like jack's gonna lick it i'll go for the lick little kitty cat lick yeah roll to hit 
Does a 14 hit? 14 meets the armor class, meets it, beats it. You're welcome to roll ghost type damage. Neutrally effective. Six. Six points of ghost type damage into her brawler as it kind of shudders as is held in the air. And Jack gives him a little, little, little lick, a little spooky lick. Nicely done. Anything else for Cindy? I think that's it. Okay. Schmidt, you're moving through the water, assuming that all you're doing is moving. Within the next six seconds, you will move 80 feet very fast. Gyarados is a powerful swimmer. Um, is there anything you want to do while you're in the water? Um, how far away am I? You can see the shore. You can see figures of people standing around, but you can't quite make out who or where they are. But you're... So, well, I'm not quite 80 feet from the shore yet. Uh, it's closer to 100. Okay. Then, yeah, just going to fully move this turn. Okay, you got it. It is Crab's turn. It's a crab. Um, he's going to make a strength check to see if he can either break free of the psychic grasp or at least do something well within it. Um, he got a natural 19. Uh, I will let him break free, I think, with that roll. Um, he falls to the ground, and he's going to sock a solid swing into Jack. Rolling to hit for this fighting type, unknown fighting type attack. Um, natural 16. That gives it uh, 18 to hit. It's going to hit. Okay. Hit. Big old fighting type move coming into Jack. Um, a bit of a lower roll. 29 points of fighting type damage as he clobbers Jack's the kitty. Down. Jack's down. Jack's down. Oh, no. Yeah. Now it's personal. Now it's personal. <laughs> um, Can I return Jack as like a free action or do i have to wait until like my turn um just give me a roll give me d20 because i feel like there's a chance that that's kind of like default um 12 you got a 12 on the dice yes okay um we're gonna say as you go to recall jack the beam connects with his unconscious body and his tail flicks and flicks it away and jack stands up with one hp he's not done with this fight oh Okay. Okay. Gimli, what are you doing? He broke out of my suspension right, or is he still? Uh, he broke out. Okay. Do it again. Oh. Do it again. Sorry. Sure. Make that intelligence check. Uh, another 12. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that will uh, suspend him. He's nice. still frustratingly kind of flinging his big old mitts in the air. Like, Stop. <laughs> yeah. Let's do Elodie. What are you doing? Um. Uh, let's see. I will go for go for a dazzling gleam from cabbage. Sure. We got to yeah. knock this guy down a little bit. Charisma save, right? Yes. Okay. Uh he crit. This crab is rolling very well. Uh This crab is crazy. Yeah, this crab is cracked. Uh I think he just negates damage, right? Uh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of fucked up. He's a crab. Uh, yeah, sorry, doesn't work. Uh, any bonus actions for Elodie? Oh, uh, I'm gonna. Psst. Psst. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The Togepi can use the metronome button. Oh my. God. Yes, that is true. I can do that. First, I'm going to Elodie's oh, party time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> true. Yeah, I will. T uh, first, all Elodie's party time, Jack. Okay. So he will have a D8 of inspiration. He may use as he pleases. Nice. Thank you. And then I will tell Quacko to tell Omelette to metronome. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, give me that metronome, baby. Do you want me to do it or you? Yeah. Squidge, do you right. want to do it? Yeah, okay. you do it. You're the one. It's your okay. turn. Okay. All right. Let's go. I've I just will, been clicking will... the button. And I've been rolling some wild shit, so I'm <laughs> very excited to see this. I'm going to go to the site, and then I'm going to click randomize, which is really sad because when I pulled up the site, it was Psybeam. Oh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> But get? now I'm going to click randomize and we'll do what that is. Okay. Round. Round. <laughs> fun. Um, using Togepi stats. Hold on. That would be a save. Um, I think that's going to be DC 12 charisma save for the crab. So. No, wait. What's your charisma score? Or Togepi's charisma score? Uh, 16. So plus three. It's plus three. Yeah. So 13 is the save here. Um, they get a natural seven. They will not be saving. Uh, please roll... 1d6 plus 2 normal type damage. That's 4 damage, baby. Let's go back to early level gameplay. Omelette. Omelette, yeah. Pretty cool. Omelette. Starting off to sing a little song. Goes, 
And then uh, the crab is like, and just can't handle it. Suspended in the psychicness. Cool. I should have asked Schmidt. Are you like? I should have asked you last turn if you want to prepare an action. Uh, we haven't been doing much of that. It's not your turn initiative right now, but I'm just curious what your intention is as soon as you hit the shore, if you have an intention. Uh, I get 80 feet of it. It's eating a hyper beam. Okay, so as you, your held action is as soon as you're in range, you want to unleash a hyper beam. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have Cindy up first. So, Cindy, what are you going to do? Fire Fang. Fire Fang. Please roll to hit. Uh, 13 didn't, didn't hit, did it? No, 13 does not meet the armor class for Fire Fang, unfortunately. With the D8, it did nothing. You added that to your roll to hit? Yeah. I got a I got a five on my D twenty and then a one on the D eight. Womp womp. Okay, Jack's still in it, but just can't see. Oh, you know what? Sorry, it's effectively restrained from the psychic powers. You should have advantage when it's restrained. Oh. Please roll okay. it again. Okay. Without using the D eight, uh, I got eighteen on the die. Yeah, so that will definitely hit. Um, please roll for fire type damage. Uh, I think you have flinch or burn here, right? No, it's only on a 19 or, 19 or higher. Okay. Um, but yeah, you do get increased damage from blaze, which is pretty cool. 11 plus 12 is 23 damage. Pretty good. The crab is looking worse for wear as Jack leaps in with fiery feints, um, piercing into its crab-like body as it continues to writhe under the influence of lasagna's telekinesis with its mental powers. Schmidt, it's your turn. You are entering hyperbeam range. Are you launching a hyperbeam at this crab? Before I do, okay. is there anyone in between me and this crab? No. It's a clear okay. shot. Clean shot. Cool. So the crab must now make a DC 16 dex save. Okay. It got an 18. I would like to... What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> I would like to ask Cindy to have Jack make a strength or dex check strength or dex they're both plus three so it's 13 13 that's above the dc i was going for this is this is how this goes down this is what happens um from out in the ocean schmidt riding atop diana um sees the target sees that jack is in trouble sees it being held up by this telekinesis which it gives it advantage for the save but we're doing this flavor anyways fires off a hyper beam it seems like the crab might be able to maneuver its body to avoid it but instead jack stands on its two legs and begins to glow a brilliant white light as he stands taller and taller and more and more muscular and he eventually evolves into incineroar he takes his bipedal hands and grabs crabrawler and holds it into the hyperbeam so it cannot be missed and crabrawler oh. gets incinerated by diana's hyperbeam there is nothing left but a pair of crab claws that fall to the sand and jack has evolved into incineroar holy shit <laughs> you think these crab claws are worth crab. anything <laughs> that was some goku and raditz shit <laughs> i think we could sell these claws let's ask omari omari is a little like dazed at what he just saw he like kind of can't believe it he's like you can't think straight but he says uh yeah there's a lot of good meat in there you could sell those probably to a restaurant nearby you won't get a lot of money but you'll get some i mean they're here we do be having them we could stop at a restaurant on our way to granite cave omari's like still coming out of a daze he feels a little blinded from the hyperbeam and he says yeah yeah you could yeah that sounds good you could do that he still he still cannot believe it uh what he's seen and he feels a little more confident with the quacko paco protecting him as an adventuring party. Let's go, Jack. What is next for the Paco? Uh, Jack is still at 1 HP, to be clear. Uh, but he he looks cool and powerful. He's a bipedal tiger with a fiery belt. Uh, he seems significantly stronger. Uh, and it seems like he might have... It might have something to do with the Doofer Town Gym. Might have something to do with this punching crab. But it seems like he's more keen on martial arts at the moment. Heck. Do we begin making our way to... Oh, after Schmidt gets to shore. Schmidt is at shore. Let's sell these crab claws and head to the caves. Okay, in that order? Is that the plan? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what type of restaurant are you looking for? This is kind of a touristy town. It's a small town, but it's still touristy. They got all sorts of stuff. A seafood place. Okay. They have a red lobster? <laughs> Uh, they have a no, red. They have a brew cr- 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 <laughs> No, they have a red claw, sir. 
Oh, okay. They have a Red Klotzer restaurant. Uh, it mm-hmm. seems to be kind of a cheapish kind of chain, um, but uh, it's a little notorious because the mascot is really cool. Uh, it is something that the shiny gang would probably enjoy. Mm. Um, yeah, you do find a Red Klotzer. Do you wish to sell the claws there? Sure. Or at least attempt Could to. They... Right there. Um, yeah. Could they throw in some Cheddar Bay biscuits too? <laughs> Roll a persuasion. <laughs> yes. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, mathing in my head. 24? Yeah, absolutely. You will get some Cheddar Bay biscuits. Um, we, <laughs> yes. don't, we don't have to RP like too much, but we can say that the Paco um, approached the restaurant and the, the host or hostess, whoever was working, they saw the disintegrated body like crab claws that you have. But, like there's just no crab attached anymore. Um, and they are kind of confused and like, eh, I'm not sure if we can just like take food off the street. Um, there's a man who's sitting alone at a table by the entrance um, and he looks very well to do. He's like in a suit and he points at the crab claws. He says, I want those. Put those on my plate. And the whole ho- the restaurant crew is like, OK, fine. Like, what, OK. And then he says 120 Pokemon dollars now. And uh, so they just take the crab claws out of your hands, puts them directly on his plate. Don't even cook them. Uh, and then they collect money and they take a cut of it and then they give you 100 Pokemon dollars for the crab claws. And some Cheddar Bay Biscuits. And some Cheddar Bay Biscuits. <laughs> yes! Um, yeah, Omari is still kind of shocked at the just general bravado of the Paco. He's uh, a little taken aback by the dynamic, but he is understanding more and more that you are experienced adventurers and you've been in these, you know, very uh, adverse situations before. And you've fed a uh, an aristocrat some dinner, so that's very good. Dinner at eleven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, or, or sorry, I to give my aristocrat dinner. Not, <laughs> <laughs> not dinner. It's lunch. I apologize. It's almost a seafood brunch, honestly. But um, uh, what's next for the Paco? Going to Granite Cave. Yeah. Uh, you make it to Granite Cave on the northern coast. Uh, the crew being Schmidt, Gimli, Elodie, Cindy, Omari, who is this strange archaeologist or treasure fanatic or someone who also enjoys a stiff drink. They're joined by their trap pinch named Pinchy. And you also have outs with you right now, Quacko and Omelet. We have Grape Juice carrying the Slowpoke strapped to its back like a backpack, as well as any Pokemon that uh, Cindy or Gimli will have out with them, which you may volunteer this information now if you wish. Or not. We can just move on. <laughs> Any Pokemon we have out. So, uh, Quacko we'll for put sure. Jack away, like return Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's such low HP. Yeah. And I'll have Cookie out because Cookie's also our light source. Okay. Uh, I have return Diana. Okay. And I'm going to bring out Walter. Walter, the Dun Sparse, hits the field. The Dun Sparse. He goes, like a Dun like a Dun Sparse would. And, uh, He's ready for some cave digging. Are you all ready yeah. to enter Granite Cave? Yeah. Okay. It Heck seems yeah. it seems like there is no contention. It seems like no one is particularly stopping you. The first thing you notice is how surprisingly expansive this cave is, or at least this part of where you're at. You enter kind of like a stone archway, um, and this ground level floor is very wide and well lit. Uh, it seems to be fairly well traveled, perhaps by casual hikers or spelunkers like you. Uh, you can hear the sounds of Pokemon squeaking and roaring from what sounds to be very far away. Immediately near the entrance as you walk in is a man in hiking garb. He seems kind of gregarious from your first impression. And he says to you all, um, oh man, are you guys adventurers and you're going in there? Be careful. There's some scary strong Pokemon on those lower levels. I'd stick to this floor if I were you. Plus, I got service on my PokéNav up here. If you have any wireless technology, be sure to use it now before you go any deeper because man, there are just no bars down there. We're stronger than anything in this cave. I pull uh, out my wireless we... technology. Can Cindy roll intimidation? Hell yeah. I wish uh, Jack was still out to intimidate too. If you're okay. incredulous about wireless technology, you can make a wisdom or intelligence check. I'm so incredulous uh, about this wireless technology. Okay, sure. Intimidation. That f- is an eight. Eight. You do not intimidate him. You are a child. He's a big hiker. He just laughs. He thinks that's funny. I got an 18. Mm. 18 I'm a wireless technology check yeah i needed a 14 or higher you just for some reason with the stroke of thought you're like what wireless technology do we have schmidt just handed over his phone and you realize that the um the box link that gimli carries uh might be the only wireless technology that might be affected by this so if you delve into the cave you might not be able to make any party swaps no biggie cool like never use it anyway <laughs> true so yeah the hiker wishes you well 
and moves on unless you stop him. And uh, you are here in Granite Cave. Uh, the cave stretches to the west. Uh, and again, this is very sparse and open. You can hear the sounds of Zubats flittering about. There are two paths. Uh, to the north, there's a gentle downward slope that leads to a well-traveled chamber. Dusty boot prints can be seen about. And uh, to the south of that path, there's a ladder with a roughly five-foot square threshold that descends straight down into darkness. All right, Omari, where to for the treasures? Omari says, oh, certainly all the treasures are going to be down below, but uh, this first floor here, this ramp, and he points to the northern path, he says, this is just a bit of a tourist site. Uh, there, there's a mural in there that people like to, to, to gaze at and draw conclusions about. If you haven't seen it before, it might be worth looking at, but if you just want to go straight to the treasure, let's go down the ladder. We can check out the mural. Everyone in agreement? Yeah, I want to see the mural. Cool. Um, you go down the slope, and you enter a small chamber of a room, about 20 total square feet, with a large mural on the northern wall framed by two lit short torches. Could someone give me an investigation check? On behalf of the party, perhaps. Uh, I am proficient in investigation, as we have rediscovered recently that I haven't been doing. Uh huh. So would you like to make um, that roll? Yeah. So that would be, yeah, like a dirty 25. <laughs> yeah, that's incredibly good. What you see are the two torches are illuminating an image depicting what appears to be a titanic clash between two monstrous beasts, one resembling kind of like a lizard or dinosaur and the other resembling a whale. Uh, the artwork seems, because of your high roll, you can tell that the artwork seems reminiscent of the style of the pieces found in and around Draconid Village, but something's different about it. Uh, it might be older, it might be younger, or it just might be like a different native group of people. Also with your high investigation check, and also because of your history and your lineage, you note that the strange shape in the middle of the mural that appears simply uh, to be like an arrow is in fact a Pokemon that you've seen artwork of before. Any thoughts or questions? I've just seen artwork of before? You, or... get, you get the sensation that more, maybe a little more personal than that, but you remember seeing depictions that are that is similar uh, to that in the past. Okay. Is Cindy familiar with the general vibes to be like, I know these guys. Yeah, she can make an intelligence check. Did Deoxys come out of a triangle? I know it's supposed to be Rayquaza, but... Well, it, it could be Deoxys. Because isn't That's the whole, like, vibe? Like, Deoxys fell down in the meteor and then, like, Rayquaza came to, like, save the day? Hmm. Perhaps that is the vibe. But this isn't depicting that, I don't think. I think this is... Rayquaza coming down while the broke-ass lizard and the hater-ass fish are fighting each other. <laughs> Could be. Um, Cindy, you got a seven on your intelligence? Yeah, seven or eight, yeah. Okay. Um, you do not know any specifics about this event. You didn't really go to school, so like you aren't totally sure. Um, the creature on the right, you do have a strange sense of connection with. You're not sure how or why or where, but it just feels, feels mm. known to you somehow yeah because mm -hmm. cindy is a kyogre baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. anything else you'd like to do with this uh mural now that you're here i look oh. at it i say hater ass fish and broke ass lizard and then i turn around and <laughs> hell yeah spoken like the lore keeper <laughs> that's great yeah you may turn around uh omari will assume that you wish to just delve into granite cave down the ladder is that your intent yep let's do it Let's find some gosh dang treasure. Um, as you descend the ladder, you notice that it just, it, there's no light source. It just immediately goes dark. There's a little filtering of light from the first floor where there seems to be plenty flowing in from just like holes in the ceiling and stuff. It is like pitch black down here. What is your plan? You have Cookie out, right? Yeah. So what is Cookie's description on that light giving? Uh, this Pokemon is consistently oozing magma, creating heat light and igniting nearby flammable materials. Oh, it doesn't give a range, though? To be able to control. Not really. Okay. Um, I'm going to suggest it is just shy of 30 feet if it's a glow, right? Um, so about 25 or 20 feet in a circle around Cookie is what you can see. As you march forward in the cave, there are roars coming from within that echo. Very fearsome sounding sounds. And there are clearly not a lot of boot prints. This is not particularly well-traveled. It is admittedly quite spooky. Um, there are skittering and pitter-patter as creatures are moving all about. Um, and you enter a fork of sorts. You follow the path of the tunnel straight, and then it turns to the right. And then you can either continue straight 
or you can turn once again to the right. Any thoughts from the party? You can also um, make checks to so see if you can identify a good way to go or something, but yes, continue, yeah. Schmidt. Dun sparse. Yeah. Has a tremor sense up to 80 feet and blind sight up to 80 feet. Okay. So I'm wondering if he can kind of suss out like which of these is the safer route. Yeah, give me yeah, a... pretty much all my party members have tremor sense. So. Okay, so you want to go for safer at this point. Yeah. Okay. With the, all of the resources at your disposal and your relative high level as a party, um, you will determine that turning right uh, features less tremors, less shaking. It seems to be less dangerous in general. Is that the path? Okay. So hear me out. Mm -hmm. Good adventures go left. And left is... Straight is the left of right, just saying. Straight is the left of right. <laughs> that is so, so true. Oh my god. Do you remember when we were in the thing and we like turned around so that we'd be making a left? <laughs> yeah. 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 Good Hear me out. Good adventures go left. And even though that path's to the right, if we lean to the left, the next path to the left is the right. So we could take the right as well. True, you're right. I, I do no, 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 I'm left. The most... <laughs> you're, you're left, you're left. My bad. I think the most left we can go makes sense, which in this case is straight. I love how right? we're disregarding the skill checks just, and, and abilities and just saying, how can we go left the most? <laughs> yeah, what's the most left we can go? It's so funny. I mean, more danger equals less people have explored it equals more treasure. So right is safer, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Left. But left is also left. Well, it's not left, left it's straight. It's straight. There's no left. Oh, so we're already walking. Yes. Are they going down the left path? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're on, yeah, you're on the left. What Grace said, straight is the left of right. <laughs> straight is the left of right, so. It's so true. But then if there's nothing to the left, then the right path is also to the left if we spin around. Right. Like if you go all the way around? Right. It's still left. Yeah. Yeah, I so. mean. You could also hold up a mirror, right? And then oh, walk. Oh, shit. <laughs> you ever think about that? Uh -huh. Yeah, hold a mirror to the path. Now it's left, and we just walk backwards. The whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, outstanding move. You know, I do have lasagna out. The reflection's already there. True, so. you have a prism. Yeah. Yeah, we have a prism. So the reflection to make the right path left, already there. If it makes you all more comfortable to trick yourselves into thinking you're going left by using psychic powers or reflective mirrors, then more power to you, honestly. Can we get um, Lasagna to brainwall brainwash all of us to momentarily flip left and right? <laughs> you can try. Yeah. I don't submit. You can resist it with an opposed intelligence check. I got in that one. Okay. If if there are psychic shenanigans, you will be Schmidt influenced. Has been brainwashed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's uh, there's no hope for Schmidt. <laughs> if there's psychic shenanigans in this fucking rock tunnel, so I guess that means we're going right, right? Right. After having a a very necessary discussion about the logistics of how this adventuring party can truly most efficiently go left, that is where we will end the session. Hello, and thank you so much for listening to the latest episode of Dunsparce and Drampa. I'd like to give extra special thanks to our latest patrons being Thomas, Taboo, Shadow Fox, and Shadow, and Nathan. If you thought about becoming a patron, now would be a great time. You get access to all sorts of bonus content, and the link tree where you can easily find our Patreon link has just recently been updated, made some visual changes, added some new links, reordered them, and took off some links that were no longer useful. So even if you've been on the link tree page, be sure to go check it out, l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash Dunsparce. Our next session will be be live on October 31st on Halloween. We will see you then. Yes. It's keeping the gun safe. Yeah, perfect. The oh my god, safe. you can! Oh, if the master ball can catch anything, it can catch the gun. Oh, it's just about the gun in it. Yeah, you can put the gun in the master ball. <laughs> go, go. Rosie just smacked my dice off my desk. Until I get the fuck out of here. Rosie's had enough. I've Wait, had I had enough of your shit. <laughs> uh, you get close to the shipyard and you can actually see these nuts. You can see that the ship is pretty. <laughs> fuck, I didn't want to laugh, but then you laughed and then I laughed. <laughs> Kara, please cut that out. I mean, like, that's separate. I need that audio separately. This is just the plot it's of the Steven. Kissing Booth 3. <laughs> so true. Where's Joey King? Where's Joey King? <laughs> just as a side note. <laughs>
Sure. Uh, Togepi has a the description for Metronome is a link. Yeah, it's a URL. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to it, and uh, this was the first move I pulled. Oh, where voice text? Yeah. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Are you sure? No, no. I just clicked the link, and that was the that was what was there on the screen. Not okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you sure you don't want this to happen? That you were just messing around with the link? No, we do not want this to happen. I just wanted to share that. God, okay. that'd be so who wild. would he do it to? Quacko is who he'd do it to. No. What the fuck? No. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Be careful with the metronome button. 